Shadow Secretary of State for the Environment, Food and Rural Affairs, Victoria Atkins, is uh, with us. Lots to talk about. Let's start with the, the news that um, after 33 years within the Conservative Party, Tim Montgomery has defected uh, to reform. What's going on with your party? Well, look, obviously, I was sorry to hear that, but um, the message um, is the same as it was at the general election, which is if you vote reform, then uh, you get Labour. And what, as we've seen, sadly, in rural seats up and down the country, where the reform vote squeezed out hard-working Conservative MPs, uh, they now have Labour MPs uh, who don't seem to understand the countryside, certainly don't seem to be standing up for the countryside, which is why we have forced today a debate and a vote on the family farm tax, which I've come onto the programme to talk about before, because we know the terrible impact that this is going to have on family farms across the United Kingdom. And we want Labour MPs to make that choice. Are they going to stand up for their constituents or are they going to toe the party line and suck up to Keir Starmer and Rachel Reeves? So, um, you that... matched with the farmers last time. Are you going to do it again? I think they're coming with their tractors next week. Well, we're, we'll see what the arrangements are, but what we're also trying to do, because I'm very conscious, you know, the rallies are really important, and I don't want farmers to have to leave their farms to come make their point heard. But we're doing what we can as Conservatives in this Parliament to really put pressure on the government to think again. And they keep telling us, Treasury ministers have said to us repeatedly, oh, farmers just need to get some advice. Well, farmers have got that advice. And as I will be revealing in the Chamber today, that professional advice from agricultural valuers shows that the Treasury and ministers have drastically underestimated how many farms and individuals are affected by this tax to the tune of some five Five times underestimation, and we believe that up to 75,000 individu uh, individuals could be affected by this farm tax over the coming generation. And that matters for us all. Not only does it matter about the stewardship of our countryside, but it also matters about the quality of our food and the availability of our food. So, so you'll support them? So Whatever action key. they decide to take next week, you'll support them? We, of course, um, we, will, uh, we will look... Obviously, I've said to the farmers, we need to be working together. We want to do so... And and they fully, you know, understand this and agree in a lawful manner. And I think, you know, it is to their absolute credit that more than 45,000 farmers came to Whitehall a couple of weeks ago and then they, at the end, cleared up all the rubbish. There wasn't any trouble at all. If there's 45,000 tractors, people. that's going to be very different. That, so this is why we have to take this a step at the time. And I'm very much hoping that this Labour government, now that they've got the new figures, now that the, the, um, the gaps in their own methodology have been revealed, we've seen that they've discounted, they've forgotten 14,000 tenanted farmers, for example, in their calculations. Um, once they realise that their figures are wrong, we're very much hoping that they would do the right thing and uh, revise and, and come back with solutions. Given that we're talking about money, there are reports that Elon Musk um, could soon donate $100 million to reform and that he believes Nigel Farage will be the UK's uh, next uh, Prime Minister. Does that concern you? Well, again, our message to anyone who's thinking of supporting reform is that we, you know, sadly, that will help Labour. Um, what we what we have to do as Conservatives, and, you know, we're not trying to avoid having this conversation. We're very much um, uh, understanding that we need to do this, is that we took a hell of a beating uh, over the summer. We get that, but we're now rebuilding and renewing our Conservative Party and the principles that we have as a party. And I very much hope that, you know, viewers at home and, and uh, others will uh, watch what we come up with over the next, um, over the coming months and years to see the new Conservative Party that we are building under Kemi Badnock. Uh, and I very much hope that we will welcome back people who perhaps didn't feel able to vote for us at the last election. Um, caps on, um, potential caps on, on migration. Yeah. Um, we've been hearing about that. Will NHS workers be exempt from that cap? So, uh, again, this is a, a long conversation that we've got to have within, you know, us a, a, as a party. I think Kemi um, is to be commended, actually, for acting as quickly as she did to talk about immigration last week. Interestingly, Keir Starmer uh, followed in her footsteps uh, after the figures came out. But we've set these... Uh, 
ideas forward, including, of course, the cap. The detail, the operational detail of that will have to be worked out. We've got time. You know, there's four years before the next election. Of four course, and a half. Well, for, and, 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 you know, as we've seen already, sadly, 20,000 people have come across in boats since the general election. So, um, depending on how Plenty poor... Plenty more came across before then. But, but depending on how poorly the Labour government responds to that, whether they um, remove completely the deterrent uh, element that we were very focused on and we know were ha was having an impact in Calais and elsewhere, um, if that uh, continues, we will have to see where we are in four years' time. Of course we will. Do you support the government in taking trains back into... or train companies? Is back into public ownership? Well, we... Uh, we so first of all, privatisation helped uh, inject massive amounts of investment into the railways uh, over the decades that it's been in place. But I think we, you know, we fully acknowledge that pa pa passengers have had a bit of a rum deal from so some train companies in recent years. Uh, we did a lot of work in government to try and improve that. Uh, and so we will wait and see what this uh, nationalisation uh, project brings for passengers. What we are very concerned about is that it should not be uh, ideal Labour pursuing ideology at the cost of passengers. The, the measure has to be whether services improve for passengers, whether ticket prices come down, whether it, the re reliability improves. And also, of course, the behaviour of the unions, because I think one of the... Um, uh, to be fair, the problems. Transport Secretary did address that and said that, you know, there, there has to be product. There has to be. And, and it is extraordinary, frankly, that the previous Transport Secretary gave that inflation-busting pay deal without any modernisation. You know, if you look at some of the practices that the unions, these rail unions, insist on, um, the stories about lunch breaks being interrupted by a boss saying hello and then their lunch break starts again. This is crazy. And so uh, we will be watching and, and holding this government to account on that modernisation project alongside this. Before I let you go, when you were um, Health Secretary, I know that you uh, met with Susan Michaelis. Um, um, she has um, lobular breast cancer. Uh, you promised um, £20 million in the government funding um, for research into lobular breast cancer. Um, She's not received that as yet, uh, or her organisation has not yet received that. How important is it that they do? It's really important, and I pay you know, absolute uh, credit, and, and I'm in awe, genuinely, of Susan and her husband and all the other women who are campaigning on this. You know, lobular breast cancer accounts for some 15% of breast cancers, and the lack of international research uh, is quite shocking, actually. And so I, as Health Secretary, prioritise women's health, and as part of that, I wanted uh, research into lobular breast cancer. Um, I, we, unfortunately, the election uh, got in the way, but I would very much hope that the Labour government uh, commits to that funding. Because, what would you say to Wes we, this morning? Um, should have that. Well, I'd say to Wes, why on earth uh, is this... Uh, and also the Children's Cancer Task Force, which I set up, where people, experts from around the country, were coming together for free to try to find ways of getting miraculous new treatments to children suffering from cancer. And that has been stopped. And I don't understand why that's been stopped. And I'm also very concerned that there doesn't seem to be any movement on lobular breast cancer. So I think uh, the health secretary really does need to underline his commitment to treating these um, very difficult, very... Uh, um, emotive conditions, but also, you know, conditions that have a huge impact on families across the United Kingdom. Shadow Secretary of State, it's always a pleasure. Thank you very Thank much you. indeed. Thank, Thank you. you.